The Vikings, originally from what we now call Denmark, had their own beliefs and ideas. But at some point, in 900 to 1000 AD, they started converting to Christianity. When Canute went from being a Viking sea lord to being a Christian king, it served as a wonderful illustration of how the Vikings themselves had evolved. Even while the shift from seasonal raiders and pirates to widely revered monarchs took only a little more than two centuries, it was one of the most significant events in Western European history. Not only had the kingdoms of Denmark, Norway, Iceland, and Sweden reached maturity, but the kingdoms of England and Scotland had also grown from the dust of the Viking Wars. Welcome to the Vikings Code, and today we will be talking about how the seafaring Northmen called Vikings became lords and kings in Britain. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. During Matin's rituals across England in 793 AD, a new prayer could be heard. Save us, Lord, from the fury of the Northmen. The Northmen, often known as Vikings, originated from Scandinavia. The Viking assault began with a series of deadly raids, just like the Saxon onslaught did before them. The earliest known attacks include the looting of the monasteries of Lindisfarne, Jaro, and Iona, which were among the first recorded raids. In 895 AD, the great heathen army, comprising mostly of Danes, came in from East Anglia and established a stronghold. Within nine years, the Vikings had invaded and established their authority, known as the Danelaw, over the kingdoms of Northumbria and East Anglia, with the old Anglo-Saxon monarchs of both countries having been put to death by the sword. Also, the Vikings devastated the once powerful East Mercia, forcing King Burgred to exile. In 871 to 899 AD, Alfred the Great, the Saxon king of Wessex, saw an opportunity to establish himself at Bretwalda and seize control of the region. He expanded his domains to include Southeast Mercia, as well as London and the Thames Valley, and he organized Anglo-Saxon resistance against the Viking invasion of Britain. Between 912 and 954 AD, the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of Wessex invaded the Danelaw and the Viking Kingdom of York, killing one Mr. Eric Bloodaxe, the final Viking King of York, and establishing a new kingdom in their place. During the Battle of Brunenburg in 937 AD, the England of both Vikings and Saxons was unified for the first time and established as a sovereign state under the authority of Athelson, the grandson of Alfred the Great. It was also the fight of Brunnenberg that established the nations that we now recognize as England, Scotland, and Wales, and is referred to as the battle that defined Britain. The happy times came to an end with the ascension of Ethelred the Unready to the throne. The Vikings had realized some years earlier that, although they relished all of their robbing and pillaging, the mere prospect of it was often enough to demand money from their victims in exchange for food and supplies. As you might imagine, getting protection money or Danegeld from a fearful weak monarch was much more difficult than obtaining the same amount from a powerful king. Aethelred must have been very concerned, for more Saxon money had been discovered in Scandinavia than has been discovered in England to this day. The country was almost dead, and as time passed, many Vikings converted to Christianity and became Christian Vikings, and this is when they started ruling in England as lords and kings. In 1009 AD, an army under the command of King Sven Forkbeard of Denmark marched toward England, smelling weakness on the other side of the North Sea. Aethelred escaped to another country, maybe anticipating that he had angered Sven by having Sven's sister slain at the St. Bryce's Day Massacre a few years earlier. Sven was succeeded by his son Canute, who in turn was succeeded by his son Hrothcanute, making up the so-called Three Danish Kings of England. Edward, later known as the Confessor, was crowned King of England in 1042 AD, after the death of Hrothcanute. Edward was a Saxon, and his biological father was Aethelred the Unready. As said before, everything having to do with Aethelred was usually seen as bad news for the Kingdom of Great Britain. Emma, Edward's mother, was originally from Normandy, a region in northern France. The territory had been given to the Northmen or Vikings by the King of France more than 150 years earlier as a gift to them from the French. Edward had spent most of his childhood in Normandy, and the influence of the Normans could be seen throughout his court in London. Among the numerous Norman visitors to Edward's court was the Duke of Normandy himself, a red-haired man by the name of William. It is believed that it was during this visit in 1052 AD that Edward the Confessor made the pledge to William for the future ownership of the Crown of England. Edward died on the 5th of January 1066, as a result, Harold Godwin, Earl of Wessex, was chosen to be the future King of England by the Witten, a council of high-ranking men. Back in Normandy, William was having some difficulty reconciling himself to this choice, and the Norman Conquest, which we have talked about in our previous video, was just around the corner. So that's it for today's video. We hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have any thoughts, please let us know in the comments section. Stay tuned with us, and we will see you in the next one.